do planes fly? I'm not going to lie here. The fact that we can send metal tubes up into the sky filled with people and cargo which somehow don't come plummeting towards the ground really blows my mind. It may as well be magic. Airplanes or aeroplanes, depending on which part of the world you come from, really are an engineering marvel. But how are they actually able to fly? Hi there, Danny Ward here. Welcome to Knowledgeica. This is the show about anything and everything. Today we are discussing planes. How on earth are these giant heavy metal behemoths able to glide so gracefully through the air? The simple answer is that planes often have wings and these wings are there for a reason. <laughs> Funny that. The wings of an aeroplane push airflow downwards as the air flows across them, which in turn creates lift for the aircraft. There are four forces acting on a plane. These are called lift, which we have just mentioned, and there are also thrust from the engines, drag from wind resistance, and the plane's weight being pulled down by gravity. During takeoff, the thrust must be greater than the drag pulling back on the plane in order to move forward. This thrust generates lift, greater than the plane's weight being pulled down by gravity. This allows the plane to climb in the sky. So why is this thing called lift generated? Well, now we're going to jump into the world of physics. And in the case of aeroplanes, it's a big old world filled with lots and lots of physics. There are two concepts which heavily describe why a plane is able to fly. These are Bernoulli's principle and Newton's laws of motion. English physicist Sir Isaac Newton didn't just come up with one law of motion. <laughs> no, he was a born overachiever. He came up with several. In the case of air flight, we are concerned with Newton's first and third laws of motion. The first law describes how an object will remain motionless at rest. An object in motion, however, will continue in motion unless acted upon by another force. In the case of an aeroplane, these forces are the ones described earlier. Lift, thrust, drag, and weight or gravity. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, this phrase has been overquoted and misused for decades as a justification for conflict retaliation. But in the case of air flight, it is very important. Now, Bernoulli's principle was created by Dutch scientist Daniel Bernoulli. This was first described in the 1738 book Hydrodynamica, a book all about fluid dynamics. Before you run out and get this book for a riveting bedtime read, keep in mind it's all in Latin. Back in the old days, they liked to be fancy and make things impossible to read. Despite this, however, it is an incredible piece of work and really shaped many of the works in current mathematics, physics, and engineering. Bernoulli's principle helped to explain the fluid dynamics of air. Air, when in motion, acts like a fluid as it can take the form of different shapes. As this fluid moves faster, less pressure is produced. A slower moving fluid will produce greater pressure. Let's combine all of these together, shall we? Newton's first law described why we need thrust from the engines to move the plane. An object will stay at rest otherwise. From here, Bernoulli's principle comes into play. An airplane's wing has what is called a leading edge, which faces forward, and a trailing edge, facing away from the direction of flight. This type of wing is called a hydrofoil, or an aerofoil, and is the standard when it comes to flight. Air will be split. Some will travel above the wing, some will travel below. Now this is where the clever engineering starts to rear its head. 
The hydrofoil wing is curved on top. This causes the air travelling over the top to speed up in relation to the air under the wing. Think of it like sliding down an icy hill. The speeding up of the air movement from leading edge to trailing edge of the wing causes the air to become stretched out, and so the pressure drops. This leads to a situation where the air on top of the wing is at a lower pressure than the air under the wing, which is at a greater pressure. The high pressure will move towards the lower pressure, meaning that the air travelling below the wing will push upwards. This action creates lift. As the plane increases its speed, the more lift is generated. The plane will travel higher and higher into the sky, providing this lift is greater than the opposite force, weight or gravity, which are acting upon the plane pulling it back down to Earth. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law adds to Bernoulli's principle. Air will angle downwards as it flows across a wing due to what is known as the angle of attack the angle at which the wing meets the airflow. An equal and opposite reaction to this will be air then flowing upwards. Lift is generated. The faster the aeroplane travels, the more air is forced downwards, leading to greater lift. When a plane is coming in for landing, they will alter their angle of attack. This will help to slow them down and allow them to descend towards the ground. Aeroplanes are essentially just giant metal birds in the sky. But what about actual birds? Well, they too use many of the same principles when it comes to flight. The big difference, however, is that birds are able to flap their wings. Unlike big, engineered metal aeroplanes, unsurprisingly, birds don't tend to have big kerosene fuel jet engines to generate thrust they flap their wings instead. All the other principles are the same. They too rely on angle of attack and air pressure. Now onto a bit of history. The Wright brothers. You may very well have heard of these guys. They were the first recorded people to create a successful airplane with controls. A popular misconception is that they invented the first experimental aircraft ever. This accolade is a lot trickier to pinpoint as many attempts have been conducted over the years. Some key players were Felix de Temple de la Croix, Alexander Fyodorovich Mozahysky, Clement Ada, Sir Hiram Maxim, Augustus Moore Herring, Gustav Whitehead, Carl Jatho, Reverend Burl Cannon, and Richard Pierce. So quite a few people managed to apparently beat the Wright brothers although many of these were certainly less successful and there is little proof to support many of the previous claims. The Wright Brothers Flyer was the first recorded to be a powered, human controllable, heavier than air fixed wing aircraft that, you know, actually worked. In 1903, four miles south of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, USA, the Wright Brothers demonstrated the first successful test flight. Over the next two years, the Wright brothers continued to develop their test invention into a fully functional, practical, fixed-wing aircraft with the Wright Flyer 3. The Wright Flyers would have used the exact same principles as modern aircraft. Sure, the plane looked a lot different to our modern-day equivalents, and the time of flight was very short, but ultimately the concept is the same. Thrust was generated by an onboard motor and lift was generated as the air flowed over the wings. The Wright brothers minimized the impact of gravity by reducing the mass of the plane as much as possible by using lighter construction materials. They reduced the impact of drag by having the pilot lie down. Voila! We have an invention that is able to fly. Thanks for watching today's episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, stay hungry for factuality.